Welcome to the deep dive. We uh, take your sources and really focus in on the essential knowledge. And today we're digging into the June 2025 issue of Skilling's Mining Review. Yeah, our mission here is to get past just the headlines, you know, to really understand what's fundamentally transforming mining right now. Absolutely. And it's, well, it's pretty clear from reading this that mining is way more than just digging things up these days. Totally. We're looking at uh, huge global shifts in iron ore, some really groundbreaking tech for gold and other minerals. And the human side too, right? Yeah. Jobs, ethics, that's all in there. Plus the um, the tricky geopolitical stuff. It's all packed into this issue. Okay. Ceilings Mining Review is basically our guide for this deep dive. It is, highlighting the key nuggets, the things you really need to grasp about these massive shifts. Okay, so let's unpack it. Starting with the global headlines section. Skillings is reporting that iron ore well, it's entering a really pivotal phase. Yeah, pivotal is a good word. You've got these enormous projects like uh, Simandu in Guinea, Grand Zambi in Cameroon. They're getting close to first exports. And these aren't just small additions, are they? No, not at all. The scale here is it's huge. We're talking about a potential um, realignment of global supply chains, chains that have been pretty stable for decades. Wow. So that could seriously challenge the, you know, the established players. It absolutely could. Think about the knock-on effects. Shipping routes, pricing, even whole national economies could feel this. A fundamental shift then. But um, the big players aren't just sitting back, are they? You mentioned Fortescue in Australia. Right. They're not standing still. Fortescue is launching pilots for green iron. Green iron. Explain that a bit. Well, it shows that counter movement. It's not just about finding new places to dig. It's about trying to completely change the process right at the source. So aiming for decarbonization right from the start of making steel. Exactly. A real push towards lower carbon intensity materials. It's happening right at the mine site. Okay. And meanwhile, Skillings also points over to North America. Some challenges there. Mm -hmm. Aging infrastructure, political stuff. Yeah, those are definite hurdles mentioned. But Canada seems to be carving out a specific niche. Oh, how so? The review highlights Champion Iron. They're focusing on ultra-low impurity exports, high-quality stuff. Huh. That's interesting. So it raises that question, doesn't it? Is the market going for pure scale from these new huge sources, or is there a premium for quality for lower impurities from existing regions? It's a key question, and it's not just the usual suspects making moves either. Egypt, for instance, they're unveiling a five-year mining revolution. A revolution? Seriously? Tell me about that. Yeah, Skilling says the goal is to significantly boost mining's share of their GDP by 2030. How are they planning to do that? Through um, digitization, better logistics, and really aggressively trying to attract foreign investment. It's quite a strategic play for a country you don't always think of as a mining powerhouse. So you've got new players emerging, old players adapting, entire countries launching these big strategies, and India's involved too. They are. Their state entity, MECL, is ramping up lithium exploration globally, places like Argentina, Australia. And that's strategic. Oh, definitely. The review makes it clear it's part of a national strategy to uh, reduce dependency on China for critical minerals. It right. really shows this global race. It's not just for the resources, but for the security and control of the supply chains. Okay, let's shift gears to innovation. <laughs> Because this issue highlights some tech that sounds genuinely groundbreaking. What really stood out to you? Oh, this is where it gets really cool. Okay, gold getting greener. Seriously. Greener gold? How? At this historic site, Hill End in Australia, Vertex Minerals and Toe MRA are using laser sorting technology. Laser sorting? Yeah. And Skillings reports they're tripling the ore grade before it even hits traditional processing. Wait, tripling? So three times the gold from the same amount of rock they mine and move. Exactly. And get this, they're cutting out 79% of the waste rock right there at the mine. 79%? Yep. The source is very clear. No chemicals, no tailings ponds needed for this initial sorting stage. Imagine mining gold but leaving almost 80% of the rock behind untouched and avoiding harsh chemicals. That's incredible. It's not just cleaner, it must fundamentally change the economics too shrinks the footprint massively. It's a total game changer. Boosts profitability overnight for high value stuff like gold. Really makes you rethink the whole process. It really puts targeted mining into perspective. Mm -hmm. And it's not just small projects either, right? Rio Tinto's making big moves. Huge moves. They're putting 1.8 billion billion with a B into clean energy in Quebec, modernizing their Isle Maline hydropower facility. Wow. 
Why such a big investment? Well, Skillings points out it's the biggest renewable investment since the 1950s. It's all about securing clean, low-carbon power for their future operations, especially for energy hogs like aluminum smelting, which Rio does a lot of in Quebec. It's like foundational infrastructure for their future green production. Makes sense. And then there's this other cool example, the circular economy one, Montreal's Xterra. Ah, yes, Xterra. They raised $20 million. And what they're doing is taking old asbestos mine tailings, basically, hazardous waste from past mining. Nasty stuff. Right. And they're transforming it into valuable products, things like nickel, magnesium oxide, even carbon credits. So literally turning toxic waste into useful materials and environmental credits. That's pretty wild. It really highlights this growing focus across the industry, doesn't it? How do you get value from what we used to just call waste? How do you clean up legacy problems and create new revenue at the same time? It's a totally different mindset about mining residue. Okay, but amidst all this cool tech and global maneuvering, Skillings also hits on a major challenge, the workforce. There's a crisis. Yeah, that comes through strongly. Specifically, yeah. the review mentions North America facing over 1,200 unfilled jobs just in mineral processing. Just processing. 1,200 vacancies sounds like a lot. That number itself is a bit of a red flag, yeah. But if you zoom out, it points to a wider systemic shortage across the whole mining pipeline, not just processing. It's a skills gap. And is it the same everywhere? Well, no. Contrast that with Western Australia. The demand there, driven by lithium and rare earths mainly, has pushed mining jobs to a record high 136,000 people. So some places are booming, but the specialized talent just isn't there in others. Or maybe not the right talent. Exactly that. This global talent crunch is a major theme in the review. It's what's driving all these initiatives you read about Workforce Corps for critical minerals, digital upskilling programs, specialized indigenous training, Right. It's not just about filling slots. No, it's about getting the specific skills needed for all the ESG stuff, the environmental, social, governance, compliance, and, of course, for operating all this new tech we were just talking about. You need different skills now. Okay, now let's touch on some of the uh, the tougher issues Skillings covers. The environmental and ethical flashpoints. Copper comes up. Yeah, copper. Often called the backbone of the green transition, right? You need it for EVs, grids, everything electric. But Skillings, citing the Business and Human Rights Resource Center, calls it potentially the most problematic transition mineral. That's the stark finding. They recorded 513 allegations of human rights abuses linked to copper mining over 14 years. 513. That's sobering. It really is. And it throws up this critical question about the... Um, the potential hidden costs of the energy transition. As demand for minerals like copper surges, the social and ethical pressures just ramp up on the communities and environments where it's mined. So green isn't just about CO2 emissions. Not at all. There's a huge human dimension that needs attention. And the environmental impact of older methods is still a big deal. The review mentions China's surface coal mining. Yeah, erasing over 91,000 tons of carbon storage just in its grasslands. That highlights the legacy issues we still need to deal with globally. Is there any positive news on that front? Well, what's promising, according to the source, are these seven bold restoration strategies they mention being piloted. Everything mm. from using AI for monitoring progress to uh, carbon credit incentives for doing the restoration work. So efforts are being made even if they're maybe early stages. Exactly. It shows there's work happening to try and repair past damage and, importantly, incentivize better practices going forward. All right, moving now into the really complex world of global trade and geopolitics. The China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, CPEC. Skillings says it's supercharging Pakistan's mineral sector. Yeah, that's clear from the review. It's happening through significant Chinese investment in infrastructure there. It's a textbook example, really, of how these big geopolitical strategies directly fuel mineral development and reshape supply chains. And it's not just state-level stuff. Companies are navigating this, too. Oh, yeah. You see things like Harmony Gold making a big $1 billion bet on copper, but doing it via an acquisition in Australia. Companies are using international M&A to position themselves in this shifting landscape. And there are also efforts to, let's say, formalize trade like Rwanda and Congo. Right. That's mentioned as Rwanda eyeing legal mineral trade with the DRC. That's a key piece in trying to get more responsible sourcing, especially in regions historically affected by conflict minerals, trying to bring things into the light. But then Skillings points out a completely different kind of obstacle, closer to home for, say, the EU public opposition. Ah, yes, that's surprising detail. Did you catch that? 
about mining's public perception in Europe ranking below tobacco. Below tobacco. That sounds almost unbelievable. I know, right? But the source claims that this low public perception is actively slowing down the EU's big critical minerals policy, the CRMA, the Critical Raw Materials Act. So public opinion is actually a geopolitical factor now. It really underscores how crucial social license, basically, public acceptance and support is becoming. It's not just an environmental issue. It's an economic and geopolitical one. Even with clear strategic goals, like securing minerals for the green transition, strong public pushback can create major delays and challenges. It directly impacts those global supply chains. So let's try and pull this all together. The June 2025 Skillings Mining Review. It really paints a picture of just immense transformation happening in mining. It really does, you know, from entirely new iron hub to potentially reshaping global trade to that amazing laser sorting tech and circular economy stuff. But also those critical workforce shortages and the very real ethical and environmental dilemmas. Exactly. The scale of change is significant. I think the big takeaway from the source is pretty clear. Global mineral supply chains, they aren't fixed. They are actively fracturing and reforming as we speak. And why does this matter to you, listening? Well, understanding these huge shifts is really key to seeing where the world is actually heading. Yeah, it shows you how the essential materials, the stuff that underpins, well, everything from your phone to new green infrastructure, how it's sourced, and the incredibly complex challenges involved in something as big as the energy transition. Absolutely. The June 2025 Skillings Mining Review shows us the future of mining. Mm. It's not just aiming to be smarter and cleaner, it's also becoming far more contested. Right. Contested environmentally, ethically, geopolitically. So the final thought maybe is, what does this increase in contestation mean for the reliability, the cost, the security of the supply chains that ultimately affect all of us? That's definitely something worth mulling over.